I know what you're thinking. I put on my mocap pajamas again and I'm now going to make stupid jokes like last time. And you're right. This week I'm thinking deep thoughts. Like, if you butt dial someone using FaceTime, is that butt time? They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. What was I talking about? Oh, right. In honor of reaching 5,000 subscribers, this week I'm releasing 5,000 animations. Not really. But I am releasing both week 9 and week 10 animations, so that's something at least. These animations are free for commercial and non-commercial use, and all I ask in return is that you hit like, subscribe, and watch as much of this video as you can before throwing up. Stick around after the animation reveals for a full tutorial on using physics in the sequencer, which will help you make your animations get physical in the nerdiest way possible. Okay, week 9 and 10 animations? Like a pinata at a birthday party, let's get into it. What the? Was that a car? Yup. In the week nine animations, we're throwing cars around, which is both fun to say, and I'd play the heck out of a game that had this mechanic. This is the first of a two-part release where I animated these for a character that can lift a car very easily. Next week, I'll publish additional versions for much more strenuous lifts. Just in case you need that sooner though, I did add a car hold loop animation to this week's release that makes the car look a lot more weighty. These animations are great if your character is a superhero or just a really strong jerk. See what happens when you don't give me a ride to the store, Donnie? This is why we can't have nice things. Anyway, where was I? Oh, right. I've got both the full pickup walk and throw evolution, as well as cut clips for the car pickup, car hold idle loop, and the car throw. The week 10 animation is a pencil roll mantle to add some much requested parkour to the mix. I've never seen anything like this one in video games, so I hope you like it. As always, drop a comment with what you thought of this week's video and release, and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see. Now for a tutorial on adding physics simulation to objects in the sequencer, let's get into it. I picked my Spartan kick from, I don't know, whatever week that was, week seven, and we're gonna, we'll have him push some weight around. But first, I'm just gonna show you generally how you get physics set up in the sequencer. So first, let's just add any shape, really. I'm gonna pick a cube. All right, we'll go ahead and bring this over. Bring it up a little bit. So now we have a cube and we're ready to drop it. I'm just gonna rotate it just a little bit to get it to do something slightly interesting when it lands. All right, so we have this. And whenever you're gonna simulate physics, you wanna go select these three dots and go down and make sure you're in simulate mode so that when you hit play, it starts to simulate. And you'll notice the van or Winnebago, the Vanabago in the background drops and it's using physics, but our cube is not. So for starters, we'll go ahead and hit control A to bring this cube into the sequencer and we'll add a, well, first we want him to stay there and we'll say for, he'll go 10 frames. And at this point we want him just to drop to the ground from a perfect standstill, like floating in air and then it just drops to the ground. To do that, the first thing we have to do is we decided that's where we're gonna start our physics. And so we want to right click, um, edit, trim selection, right? We want the transform track to stop at this moment and let physics carry on forward. But another thing that we need to do with this transform track is make sure that we're uh, keeping state. So this project default, change that to keep state. You just right click, you can actually right click anywhere in this track and do the same thing under properties, keep state. And so now that'll let her, whatever happens up until this moment, it's just gonna, that's where the cube will be and the motion that the cube will be executing will happen that way. Okay, so now we go over to the cube, we hit plus sign, we add our static mesh component um, track to the sequencer, and then we go under body instance, so that is the plus sign on the static mesh component, body instance, physics, simulate physics. So this is the track that says when we're gonna be simulating. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a key at the beginning where we're not, and then we go to frame 10, and let's start simulating. So now, unlike before, where it was super boring and the cube was just staying still, when we hit play, when I fire up this level sequence, there we go. We have a nice physical drop. And now, if you don't want to drop it, you want to actually have some initial velocity when it moves, you have some options here. So let's go in and we're going to go ahead and just, we'll key a uh, transform track and we'll just, let's just make him, we'll just make him throw. It'll go up and to the right for a little bit here. Now I'm already seeing a problem with that. Let's go ahead and go to our curve editor. Let's grab our transform. Yeah, and we're seeing. So you see how this has easing? If you just hit four, that'll change it to linear keys. 
So it's going to look a little weird. We're just going to go grab all of our keys here and put them back on the first frame so he's not moving up. So we'll just stay still. And then he's just going to fly off into forever. And I'll go ahead and uh, extend out my... Let's go see what happens. Yeah, very cool. And so if you want to change how that's behaving, you can go into your transform and... Like, for example, if you want it to, oh, I see this needs to be linear. So let's say we don't want him to go quite so high. So he's flying up. He's going kind of crazy. So we can just drag this down. See? You have complete control over what your physical simulation looks like. And it could be playing the whole time. So you can decide, hey, I don't want him to go so far. See? Or I want him to be lower and don't go so far. Do you want them to go far? So you have complete control over how that physical physical simulation goes. So now let's go ahead and get this guy kicked by the Spartan kick. And to do that, we're just going to go grab this cube. And I'm going to zeroize all of his uh, go to the beginning. We're actually just going to get rid of all of his keys. And I'll go to the details. Come up here. All right, so now we have a normal cube. We'll go ahead and bring them up, move them over here. Hit end to drop them down to the ground. And we'll go position him properly for the Spartan kick. Oh, we still have some keys because I only deleted the, the location keys. I didn't delete the rotation keys. All right, so now let's go figure out where we want them to kick. So I think... I actually want him to be so let's go a little bigger. Yeah, that'll be about right. So at that key, that's where I want him to be. So I'll go ahead and key everything in the cube. And now we know we're actually wanting to take our physics simulation and move it over to start at that frame instead. So now we have this. We've got some scale issues that are um, hilarious, but not really productive. So we'll go ahead and delete all the keys ahead of this. And we can come back to zero and just key everything in the cube. Like that's always a, a good thing to do. So now we have, bam. So he kicks here. I need to move my physics simulation out a little bit. And now we're going to grab this track. We're going to extend our transform track just one more a little bit more. Um, yeah, let's let's go see. We actually want going to do all of our work in one frame here, and so we'll go grab it. And so now we can. So let's go ahead and key it. We'll open up. We'll open up the transform track in the curves, and we have some options. But I know I want the at the start. I want all of the animation, I want it all to be linear. Um, so I'm control shift and middle clicking and moving up and down. So let's just see, let's see what that impulse does for us in this situation. Oh yeah, that's pretty good actually. Now, if we want less, we can just bring this down. There you go. You see, every time you do it, it's going to be a little different. It's going to cause different, uh, so it's a different physical simulation every time. So if you want to, you can actually just um, select your mesh actor, hit record, and you can record some of these, and then you can go edit the keyframes if you don't like it, um, exactly how they do, or you want to subtly tweak what goes on with them. And that's it. That is physics in the sequencer. Thanks for watching. See you next time.